Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my hex map game development series. In the last two videos, which you can look out for in the top right, we took control of the segments of our hexes and managed to get our units walking smoothly on a path consisting of any arrangement of segments or waypoints. But the waypoints still had to be set by hand. Today we will adapt our pathfinding algorithm to be based on segments rather than hexes. Way back in part 3 of this series, we started off with breadth first search, then considered various ways of improving the algorithm, until we ended up with a properly optimized A star search algorithm that applied some intelligence to the decisions of which hexes to visit and which to skip. This left us with an algorithm that could guarantee finding the shortest path through a map containing both impassable obstacles and variable movement cost. Feel free to revisit that episode to review the basics before we adapt our algorithm for segments. The basic change in the algorithm from hexes to segments was actually remarkably quick and easy. For the hexes version, all that the algorithm really required to find a path from one hex to another was for each hex on the map to know who all of its neighboring hexes were, and what the movement cost between each possible set of hexes are if it could indeed be traversed. Making sure the rules catered for all eventualities could be a bit tricky, and there was also the search heuristic as absolute lowest possible move cost between hexes, but it actually requires very little information to work. For the segments version, the algorithm works exactly the same way. All I needed to do was make sure the data structures applicable to the search algorithm of the segments mirrored that of the hexes and assign new values to the distance parameters and rules. Previously, I called this class hex internal location, but I've changed it to the more appropriate hex segment. I needed to add a reference to its parent hex, so we could find a reference to other segments in this way. I'm also storing its position, since that will be used a lot now. Then follows the pathfinding variables. Path from will be used to store the previous segment in the path, Search phase and next with same priority are used to decide which segments should be entering and exiting the search frontier, and distance and search heuristic is added together to determine the search priority of the segment. The search algorithm itself is quite simple really. It starts off with some initialization and starting the search frontier at the starting segment. Then, as long as there are promising segments still to visit, and the shortest path to the target segment hasn't been found yet, it loops through the neighbors of the currently visited segment. For each neighbor, it tests whether the hex may be passed and what the move cost between the two segments are, adding it to the current accumulated move cost. The search frontier and minimum distances are updated and the next segment in the queue is visited until the shortest path to the target segment is found. Of course, we also need to be able to determine neighbors for segments, so we have a mirrored getNeighbors method. Obviously, if you're currently in the center point segment, it's easy to just pick the segment on the same hex in the required direction. But when you're on one of the other segments, the rules are a bit more complex than for the hexes, since you may need to jump over to different segments on different neighboring hexes. I also started off with six possible directions for the segment-based approach. The first configuration I tried is depicted here, keeping all neighbors tightly grouped on only two hexes. This means the unit can walk to the left or right of the neighboring hex instead of being forced to the one right next to him, allowing him to pass obstacles on that segment directly next to him. But there are still open spaces he will not utilize, since he is not allowed to pass across to the hexes more to the left or right of the current segment. So, I next replaced the left and right options by the segments on the hexes to the left and right. Now you can see how he takes the wider crossover path, rather than the tighter previous path. Which means he can actually now shorten his walking distance, since he can cross over between these trees here. But we've lost the previous option of crossing over only slightly, 
still on the hex in front of him. In this situation, we'd want him to take the narrow path to the left or right of the rocks to get to the lower part of the screen. However, we've now replaced that option with a wider crossover, which is blocked by walls in this situation. So he will have to walk the long way around the walls. But while he's doing that, note how beautifully this path takes him around that wall. While he would have walked a little zigzagged if he had to cross over tightly rather than wider. So we actually want to keep both these options open. Another consideration is whether a path taken forwards can also be taken in the other direction. If a unit is allowed to walk from segment A to segment B, he should surely be allowed to walk from B to A as well. In our first configuration, this wasn't actually possible. He could cross over to the left or right, but once he got there, the crossover to the right or left from that segment led to a different neighboring hex. For the second configuration, at least he could also trace his path backwards successfully. How can we plan our neighbors to achieve maximum mobility across open spaces and also allow units to take paths in reverse if they are admissible walking forward? The answer is, we will have to allow more than 6 neighbors for every segment. Using these 12 neighbors gives us maximum mobility where open space presents itself and allows a unit to walk back to his starting segment from any of the possible neighboring segments as well. It does mean we need to implement a few more rules, which also become more complex, as you now need to check more segments for whether you are allowed to pass over their corners. But once that's done, your units will thank you for it, and that should make it worth it. To implement this, we need our pathfinding method to loop through 12 instead of 6 neighbors. We could add 6 more directions, but we could also do something like this. Let's view the green highlighted segments as an inner ring and the red highlighted segments as an outer ring. Whenever we want to determine a neighbor in one of the 6 directions, we just also specify whether it needs to be the inner ring or the outer ring neighbor. So our pathfinding method now also loops over inner and outer ring. Except of course when the current segment is the center of the hex, in which case we are only interested in the 6 directions, which will define to be the inner ring. If we now add these 6 extra cases to the get neighbor method and update all the move cost rules, making sure the unit can actually cross over all the corners it needs to, depending on what is situated on each segment, our units now have maximum mobility and can squeeze through between objects whenever some open terrain allows them to. Just look at them finding those little paths. But wait, you'll notice that they're still walking straight through each other. We have not yet let them actually occupy segments and consider whether segments are occupied by another unit before moving on to them. This is what we'll cover in the next video. If we really want it working well, this testing of the segments cannot only happen once when the path is searched for, since the map is dynamic with units moving all over the place. Each time a hex is about to be entered, it would have to be tested first, and if it has become occupied since the path was initially determined, a new path would have to be searched for. Or some kind of slight waiting period needs to be enforced to allow one of the units to pass first. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.